recording. Here we go. And um, I'm basically going to set this up, and you can take it from there, because I know you got something to say, because you're a man, you can say what mm -hmm. you want to say. Basically, this is my youngest son, Nicholas Saunders. We call him Nick. Tricky Nick trying to be slick. That's what he, 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 he for the longest time. And back when he was a child, he was a very, very young man. He was bullied in school. I mean, they did joke. They had guns and stuff. I mean, what, what, what the hell is going on? You in New York? You know, they had all this stuff going on. It was negative, negative vibes. And um, my thought was, as I was uh, going through a situation with his mom, we were getting divorced, and I was saying to myself, I said, man, how am I going to affect my children now? What, what am I going to do? And then on top of that, on top of everything, I had done phenomenal stuff. I had gotten back in the Army at 47, but that was, that was okay. But when I got out of the Army at 51, when I hit 52, I came down with multiple sclerosis. Now, those of you that know about multiple sclerosis, if you don't, Google it, and you'll see images of people in wheelchairs, walkers, canes. They don't run. They don't do no push-ups, sit-ups. Forget about lifting weights. That's not the image that we have of an individual that has that condition. And I, and I instantly thought to myself, how am I going to, what am I going to do now? Because they lived in a different state. They lived in Alabama. I lived in South Carolina. On top of everything else, I only saw them every, you know, every blue moon as it was. And then when I did see them, I was going to be like, out of the box, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have them read something. Maybe they, maybe I can change their mindset by what they read, by what they see. And they would say to me, said, Dad, this is summertime, man. You got us over here reading this stuff. We supposed to be going to the pool and going to the park. What we got? I said, Look, y'all gonna learn today. <laughs> y'all gonna learn today that you need to do something to help yourself. Right now, you won't really understand what I'm saying, but in the future, it's all gonna come to pass. It's all gonna come to fruition. You're gonna thank me later on that I led you down this path and you took it from there. And that's basically what, what ended up happening. I had them read, the, I think the first book I had them read was um, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And he had some principles and some ideas that were counter to what they had already learned. But they gravitated to it. Really, really, me being the parent that I was, I wasn't just gonna give them a book and say, y'all read this when you get a chance. Oh, hell no. We're gonna read this chapter by chapter, but we're gonna go over it with a notebook, and we're gonna, you're gonna explain to me what you got out of each chapter, and then, on top of that, you're gonna tell me at 12, and 14 years old, that's the age group they were, 12 and 14 years old, what you're going to do to utilize the information that you read to benefit and turbocharge your lives. Would you do that for you? I mean, you know, for you guys that are looking at this right now, would you do that for your 12 and 14 year old? Would you talk to them that way? Would you give them information or would you just give them a book and say, read it? If you don't know how to read your day off on self, you probably wouldn't give them a book. You probably, you know, tell them, you know, you just have to have at it. Do you, you do you. Well, anyway, make a long story short. Nicholas took the book. He read other material. And when I went over his house, because he, he got out of the dorm, because he went to college, he got out of the dorm, I began to see manifestations of his organizational ability. He had a big board up on the, on the wall. He tracked his rent. He tracked his cell phone bill. I, I, was, I, was, I was observing. I was like, okay, okay, okay. And I mean, I didn't say very much, but I was observing. I said, he got it. He got it. He, and then when he became a freshman, you know, like when you go to college, man, you, 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 when, you go to, when you were a freshman in college, they lose their mind because, they, because now they got some freedom. Eyes are free. So he started partying, he started oversleeping, he wasn't going to class, and his grades suffered. 
So me being the concerned parent, I'm saying, hey, son, 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 how are your grades doing, man? Well, dad, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't doing too good. Why is that? You ain't paying for nothing. What, what, what's, what, what the problem is? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, maybe I'm going partying too much. I said, well, you need to, you know what? I don't know about that. All I know is I'm 57 going on 58. I'm about to get my bachelor's degree. So you already know, I don't want to hear from nothing. So you need to tell me in the next three weeks, next three days, I said three days, it took him three weeks to get it to me. You need to tell me how you're going to fix this. I mean, I can't fix it for you. I can't take the classes for you. How are you going to fix this? And unbeknownst to me, amazingly, it took him longer than three days. But when he came back with the plan on Messenger on Facebook, he sent me on a piece of paper, I still have a picture of that, of his plan how he was going to get a tutor, how he was going to go to bed like he was supposed to, how he was going to make sure he didn't miss classes, how he was going to make sure that he read what he wrote every day. I mean, he wrote everything down that he was going to do. And that turbocharged him into getting involved further with weight training and bodybuilding. He, he listened to my initial, I told him, I said, look, everybody works on their chest. Yeah, when you go to the gym, they ask you, how much you bench? It's first question they ask you. And I said, everybody works in their body parts that they can see. But what they don't work on is they don't work on their legs and they definitely don't work on their back. If you can learn how to do your back right, it's going to spread out to your whole entire body. I said, you, you understand that? He said, yeah, I got it. I got it. And I thought he would be like a seven, six or a seven with, with it all. He goes ahead and becomes 11. I mean, how the hell how you go from six to 11? I mean, I'm thinking that you're gonna be a, a six or a seven, you become an 11. I'm like, oh my God, he, he's, he's a beast. So he was once a overweight child. No, he was fat. I'm just gonna call it like it was, he was fat. And he couldn't, he couldn't jog or run comfortably without being out of breath. And uh, I'm gonna let you tell. I'm gonna let him tell his story as to what he did to change himself. What were some of his some of his activities that he did that were counter counterintuitive against his against his peers? Because his peers didn't give him no no didn't give him no love. They didn't, didn't didn't spur him on that they weren't doing anything to go ahead and get to the next level. They were just doing stuff just to be doing stuff. They, I guess they just kind of wanted it. But suddenly, his body changed, and then, then, then he wanted it. So, son, can you give the people some stuff that they need to maybe to inspire their children to get off their behind and do something for themselves? Um, well, I'll start off with just my story. You pretty much um, summed up everything. But uh, when I was about 10 years old, you know, I can always remember as a kid, always wanting to be like in shape, but it always seeming like something that was just out of reach or that, you know, having my own self-limiting beliefs, you know, as we all tend to have from time to time. So when I got to about 12, I made a decision I wanted to lose weight. You know, I just basically just stopped eating as much food. I don't think I even focused on what I was eating. I just stopped eating as much food, started riding my bike more. And, um, Lost about 50 pounds. I got real skinny. Um, eighth grade, I started uh, weight training. My daddy showed me, um, you know, all your major compound exercises, squat, bench, deadlift, you know, dips, pull-ups, um, you know, rep scheme, eating enough protein, all that, all that good stuff. Um, I made pretty good progress during that time. Uh, the main thing I used to, like, keep myself motivated was – um, I knew what I wanted to look like. I knew um, what I didn't want to look like, which is, which is probably just as important as what, what I wanted to look like. And um, I knew it was going to take a lot of hard work, and I just kept on with that mindset. Whenever I didn't want to go to the gym, I actually had a wallpaper of Ronnie Coleman on my uh, 
iPad, and that was, I, I would obviously he was on steroids, but it still uh, helped motivate me whenever I didn't want to go to the gym. I would just look at that wallpaper or you know watch some bodybuilding videos, and you know that gave me the motivation to ride my bike through the gym or you know go go the extra mile, so to speak. So I did that. Um, Fast forward, you know, I made lots of progress throughout high school with like, you know, bodybuilding and lifting weights and training people. I was training people twice my age, really three times my age at 17. Um, I helped one lady lose 20 pounds at 17. I helped my uncle lose over 100 pounds at 17. Um, did all that. I was had a really good time helping people and, you know, really uh, learning more about my own body at the same time. Um, Fast forward to college, uh, as a lot of people do, you know, had like a stage where I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, you know, sleeping in, uh, partying, doing doing all the stuff that, you know, people tend to do when they first go to college. So I had to get my head on straight. Um, my dad, like you said, he called he called me, asked me, you know, how was my grades? My grades obviously weren't that good at that time. So I came up with a plan, you know, get a tutor, get eight hours of sleep. Um go to class, not sleep in, obviously, because obviously you're not going to get good grades if you sleep in. Um, so I did that, got my grades up, um, actually ended up getting, actually ended up graduating on the dean's list just uh, last year, back in 2019 in December. So, uh, you know, a lot of these things that I talk about, they really carry over to other things. Like if you tend to be, if you're sleeping in on class and you're, you know, not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing, that tends to carry over into other parts of your life. So it's important to be consistent, as I like to tell people, with small things, because that carries over to being consistent with big things. Um, that's pretty much my mantra that I, that I have. So do me a favor, son. Can you turn your phone horizontal? Because your, 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 your image is um, it, it's cut off a little bit. Turn your, there you go. There you that's go. Better. That's better. That, now we're cooking. Now we're cooking, <laughs> with a, we, 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 we're cooking with a full pot. There you go. Um, I remember you telling me that you would go to the gym in the swamp because Alabama get hot in Alabama. It gets hot yeah, here. Real hot. Real it hot. Get hot here. Hot and, and, and humid. But you would go to the gym in the sweltering heat or the frigid cold on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. That. That to me is is remarkable because I know people that won't walk across the street to, to even do a, a to, to walk around the block when it gets a little cold or walk around the block when it gets a little hot. But you rode how many miles was that to the to the gym? It was uh, about two miles there and two miles back. So even on leg day, you had to ride your bike back from the gym. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no car, so. Oh my goodness! Parents with that work, so that's the only way to get there. So, you, what did you use? What did you use to change your mindset? I mean, it just, I mean, just, I mean, just, I couldn't just, couldn't have simply been just a. Well, for you, later on, it was, it was just a decision that you were going to be a certain way. But along the way, you had to use something. What were some of the tools that you used to get your mind right? Um, to be honest, I'd say the main tool for me is just like, it's kind of like what I said earlier when I was a kid, I always had a, I always wanted to be fit, but I didn't necessarily know how to do it or really, I guess, early enough have the motivation to do it. So once I received that motivation, I believe I was maybe like 14 and, um, and I just made a decision. I was like, I want to, I want to bodybuild. I want to be strong. I want to, I want to look like somebody that, you know, exercises, that lift weights. And once I made that decision, it was just a matter of commit, just basically just a matter of, of this time, just doing it consistently day after day after day. And just being the type of person I am, I mean, I'll, if I say I'm going to do something, even if I have to pass out on the way, I'm going to do it. So that's basically just what I did. Just committed, made a decision, and just went all for it. And, but but there had to be something that that necessitated you, that caused no, not you. Not really. Not, I mean, not really. I can I can like, remember being I can remember being for I had things that inspired me, but I never really had like the 
people talk about, you know, they had like the Eureka moment and they, you know, everything just falls into place. For me, it really was, I had people that inspired me being, whether it's you or bodybuilders or, you know, people that are in shape. And after, once I had the thing that inspires me, to me, that's, that's all I really need to keep going. As long as I know what I want to look like or what I want to achieve, whether it's a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, or whatever it may be, if I, as long as I have those two things, that's really all. I'm, I'm not a person that needs like a lot of external factors. I can motivate myself if I know exactly what it is that I want to achieve. Well, fundamentally, you first made a decision that you wanted to look a certain way and you were motivated or you were inspired, excuse me, nobody can motivate you, we, we motivate ourselves, but other people can inspire us. You were inspired by outside entities or outside sources, but you motivated yourself internally, as you're saying. Yes, um, yeah. For you to be inspired to want to wanna be at a different level, you, you had to have seen something or thought about something that made you, because there are a lot of people out here, people, the questions that I, that, that I will feel from, from, from you, from this, from this interview, so they'll say, well, what, did he just wake up one morning and he decided he was going to be this way? And that's exactly what you're saying. You woke up one morning and you said, that's it. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's it. I know that may not be the answer that you're expecting, but that's, that's really what happened. I mean, like I had people that inspired me. Like I said, you, I mean, you always, you drilled fitness into, you know, me and Olivia at an early age. So I had you as an example, but then, and I also, you showed me bodybuilders that were successful. Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Lee Haney, all these guys. So I looked at them. I looked at you. You obviously lifted weights. You were in shape at that time. And that was, I mean, with the type of person I am, I mean, that's about all it is for me. I don't have to have, you know, somebody walk me through every little thing. If, you, if, if I make up my mind, this is what I want, and I ask you, hey, about dieting, about, you know, lifting weights, about nutrition, getting enough sleep, you know, all that stuff, that's, that's really all I need. I mean, I can motiv- the rest of the motivation I can do, I can inspire or motivate myself as long as I have the right inspiration. So I'll, I guess what I'm getting at is, the inspiration was there from you, from the bodybuilders I saw, from, you know, fitness people that I looked up to. And the grinding, as Eric Thomas would say, I mean, nobody can really do that for you. You have to wake up. You have to decide to go to the gym. You have to decide to go to class. You have to decide to go to work when you don't want to. You have to decide to do these things. Nobody can really make you do these things. So once I made a decision that that's what I wanted to do, then it's just a matter of inculcating the knowledge that I'm getting and putting it into practice. Did you, did did you formulate um, body goals or weight goals or what kind of goals did you formulate to get the body that you're at? Oh, all the time. I usually would give myself, I would say by this certain date, because you have to have a date that you want to commit a goal. Otherwise it's just in just a dream. I'd have a certain date that I wanted to commit something by, be it, I remember, I think I was in 10th grade, I was like 185 pounds, and I wanted to be 200 pounds. Um, obviously, I didn't want to be 200 pounds of fat, so it takes time to put on that kind of mass, and I believe I gave myself about a year to get there, and with work, I achieved that, so I always had goals. Um, I would say, now that that's not something that that is something that, you know, you taught me how to do. That's not something that a lot of people really, you know, just have a eureka moment. Oh, I'm going to have a goal and write it down and, you know, try to achieve it by a certain time frame. A lot of people just tend to have it floating in their head. But um, I wrote it down, you know, said I want to do this. I knew what I needed to do. You know, I knew I knew I needed to up my gym sessions and all that stuff. And um, that's pretty much what I – the the mantra that I kept doing, I'd set a weight goal. I knew I know I had a certain amount of time that I wanted to get it done by, be it a year, be it six months, be it two years, whatever it may be. And I'd have the steps of committing that goal written down, get enough sleep, um, eat, enough, eat so many grams of protein a day, 
do so many body parts a day, et cetera. And um, by doing that, that's, that really got me to where I wanted to be. The hardest thing was basically just staying doing it because, you know, it's not comfortable to, you know, work the hell out of yourself every day. But that's what it takes. So. How did you work yourself? How did you work your way through your friends? Say so what? How did you work your way through your friends? Work my way into in front of my friends. Work your way through your friends because your because your friends no doubt weren't like you. No, no, not at all. Um, I w- I would say it kind of kind of goes back to what I was saying before of you have to you have to you have to know where you want to be at and in in hindsight you know you really want to have people that are on the same mission as you. Obviously, you know, I didn't necessarily have that when, you know, when I was in high school. I hung around people that had similar interests in me, but not necessarily that had similar ambitions as me, which if I could go back, I would find, you know, more people that resonated with more of the stuff that I like to do, like bodybuilding and whatnot. But aside from that, it was, it was really none of my friends, you know, really stopped me or tried to stop me from not that they could from, you know, going to the gym or anything. I'd just be like, hey. You know, I know we're enjoying the video game right now, but I got to go to the gym. And they'd be like, okay, you know, I understand. So um, basically just, you know, I think having mutual respect, like they they know that bodybuilding is something that's important to me, even if it's not important to them. And, uh, you know, I just wouldn't let anybody stop me, whether it's my friend or my mom or stepdad or cousins, aunts, uncles. I wouldn't let anybody stop me from going to the gym. Oh, I wouldn't even let myself stop myself. So that's pretty much how I fought through that. Well, I've seen it with you as well, because I'll call you on the phone sometime. He said, I, 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 son, I'm hanging off a cliff right here. I bump my fingernails. He said, Dad, if you could just hold on a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to this. I'm in the gym right now. I got to finish. I'll, I'll come and get you. I'll come help you out. But if you fall, I'm sorry. But I got to get this gym workout in. You're relentless when it comes to the gym, and I respect that greatly. That's why I never, never, ever, as they say, bucked up over that because I was like, damn, even me, I call up and he tell me he can't talk to me right now. He can't talk to me. <laughs> he, he's serious. He's serious. And, and I respected that because I saw that it was something that – and you transferred much of that attitude into your daily activities at home, how you manifested the ability to track – what you needed to do. How did you do that? Um, really, I'd say a lot, I'd say a mixture of personal development stuff that, stuff that you showed me and a mixture of, I would say mainly a mixture of that and, and similar to what I was saying, just being the type of person I am, a mixture of just doing it. Like I, I can't, I guess I can't really put it any simpler than that. You just got to do it. Like somebody can, tell you to do a b and c but if you don't do a b and c then you're going to still be stuck at the same place so basically just you know you learn from personal development one of the major overarching themes is um doing is is writing down goals committing yourself to them having a certain time frame that you're gonna basically complete these goals by um and that's basically what i take into my everyday life i got on my calendar, I should have on my phone, I have tons of stuff that, you know, I write in there every day, um, be it small stuff or big stuff. And um, I just make sure by the end of the day or the week that I finish those things. Now, no doubt, everything that we do, everything that we do, some of the, or some of the things that we do don't turn out the way that we want them to turn out or the way that we perhaps have expected them, but we be right. pushed through and we get it done. How, how did, what did you do to deal with disappointment? Um, that's, that's, that's kind of a, that's, I guess that's kind of a tricky one um, because, you know, nobody, nobody wants to be disappointment, but anybody that's successful will tell you that disappointments are going to happen. That's just the way it is. Um, I don't want to give a cliche response like, you know, just, you know, never give up, never give in. Cause I, I don't think anybody, you know, 100% of the time doesn't give up or 100% of the time 
doesn't do things that they're not supposed to do. Um, like, you know, people have, people fall off the wagon sometimes, be it with their diet or be it with, you know, whatever it may be. I think the key is if you are going to fall off, you know, don't stay down for too long. So if say I'll maybe with classes, for example, I'll use like, you know, back when I was getting my bachelor's, if you know, you know, you should have studied two hours and you only study one hour. Well, obviously you're not going to do as well on the test. If you study one hour as opposed to two hours. So when you get that bad grade on the test, you know, let that be a wake up call. Okay, I need to study two hours next time and not study one hour. So I guess you could say I try to learn from my mistakes and not repeat those same mistakes. Okay, okay. Um, how has, how has um, when was the introduction of faith put in, inculcated into your being and how have you used it to further yourself? Um, I would say that was introduced to me probably from a very, very young age. Um, I mean, I can remember being five, six years old and knowing about, you know, God and, uh, knowing about my faith, which is Christianity. Um, so I'd say a very, very young age. Um, I would say before I really probably started taking my faith seriously, I'd say I was probably maybe probably around the same time that I started working out, probably around 14. 14, 15 in that area. And uh, to answer the second part of your question, it's done a lot for me. Like, you know, I pray every, every day, twice a day, um, especially with like major decisions and small decisions. I make sure to run it by the man upstairs before I try, before I make any decisions that I know are going to have very profound impacts. And even during my workout, um, I'd be like, God, just get me through this next set. So even with small, <laughs> seemingly small stuff, I'll, I mean, sometimes I need some extra help. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to lift all this weight. So, um, you know, I just, I try to incorporate faith in my everyday life with big and small things. Okay. I know that in the beginning, in the way, 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 way beginning, you were the, the swiftest person uh, with, with the ladies. You had some issues. You, you had some challenges. Right, as we all do. As we all do, exactly, definitely. Don't don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you? How has your faith, and how has your mindset helped you work through challenges with the lady? Because you obviously have a very what's her, what's her name? Selena. What's her name? So it's, uh, well, it's really Selena. Well, Selena. Selena. How did you? Now, she, she, she's obviously a very beautiful young lady. She's very, very focused, and congratulations. But how did you meet her, and how, what is it, how did your faith and your mindset aid you in connecting with Selena? I would say my faith put me in a better spot to meet someone like Selena, because, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we both are, have, are very similar on our spiritual uh, field. Um, like we both go to church. She actually sings in the choir at my church, but um, we both go to church. We both, you know, feel the same way about religion. We we both, you know, pray every day. You know, we both do a lot of the same things spiritually. So I would say with my spirituality, it put me in a better position of meeting someone like her than if I, than if say I was, you know, somebody, somebody that wasn't spiritual. I likely, me and her probably wouldn't connect because she made it very clear that, you know, she's a Christian and, you know, these are her beliefs. And I was like, okay, you know, these are my beliefs. So we ha we're on similar playing field. So I, I would say it put me in a lot better spot to beat someone like her. I see that she also works out too. Is that her origination origination, or is that yours? That was mine. That was mine. She's, uh, she wanted to lose weight when we, when we first got together. So I was like, well, you and, with the right person, like this is what I do. And uh she just started she just started working out and you know she liked the result. It's hasn't been the easiest journey as as it's not really for anybody. I mean it wasn't easy for me when I started off either. So um but she's been working at it for about a good six, seven months now. And like I said, she's lost almost twenty pounds. Wow. Says she feels better. You know, she she likes the shape that it's given her that that it's given her. And um she likes it. She likes it pretty good. Okay. Okay. So 
I mean, you have a job now. Where do you work again? I work at Sam's, and I actually have three jobs. I work at Sam's. I work as a church basis for two churches, and I work at the YMCA as a personal trainer. Three jobs, basically. Three sources of income, basically. Yeah. And I'm, 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 the reason why I'm, I'm underlining that is because there are people that they think one source of income can be enough. <laughs> Me personally, I don't see how that could be, okay? I but don't they, see how that could be either. They think that that's what it is because all you got to do is Google the median income for the average human being in the United States. I don't care if they're in California or they're in New York or they're in the Midwest, wherever. There's a median income that we all are able to obtain with one job. And it's not a lot of money. <laughs> no, it's not. Especially <laughs> if you have kids. And if you got children, you hurting like I don't know what, you know? So the fact that you have three jobs, you have three sources of income, I have four. So the, the, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, okay? No, it doesn't. Um, your mindset prior to going into college and what you were going to be doing when you got out of college in regards to employment, has it changed any at all? Uh, yeah, I would say it has. Going into college, you, you – I can. I mean, I can't really speak for it, for everybody. But I can speak for myself. Going into college, you know, you kind of have this idea of, you know, oh, when I get out of college, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get a job in my field. I'm a, you know, I'm gonna make big bucks. But then, you know, you graduate, you start getting closer to college, closer to your graduation, and you start finding out that, you know, that dream is not necessarily set in stone as as you thought it was. Like life doesn't just hand you a silver spoon just because you have a, you know, bachelor's degree. So I would say my mindset has changed in the sense of um, I don't I don't have like an idealized I don't I don't try to depend on my degree as much as I thought I would have had to depend on it. Like I you know I'm a church guitarist that doesn't have any you know anything to do with a with my degree. Um, my job at the YMCA is related to my degree, but technically I could work there you know with just a with, with just my strength training certification. But um, that's mainly the way it's changed. I I don't I don't really believe in depending on just one thing. I believe in similar to what you said, having multiple sources of income. I do believe in you know not putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. Yeah, how does how does Selena feel about that? Oh, she feels the same. I mean, she doesn't have she actually has multiple sources of income too. She. Uh, works for a phone. She works at Subway and she manages a furniture store. Wow. And she's a nurse, right? Oh, no, she's, uh, she's, she's studying, studying she's to studying, be a nurse. She's studying to be a nurse on top of that. So you guys have similar mindset when it comes to work ethic. Very which much is, so. Which, which, is, which, is, which, is definitely, which is definitely a plus. You know, I, um, my fiance, um, she grew up in my neighborhood. Actually, it's kind of a funny story. She actually wow. grew up in my neighborhood 60 years ago. I didn't know who she was. Didn't, I didn't have a clue. She went to my elementary school. She went to my high school. I didn't know who she was. She only went to my high school one year. I still didn't know who she was. Uh, 60 years later, I got involved in a business and she joined my business. We met then. 60 years later? And wow. we resonate, we resonate, we resonate, we resonate. Do I, did, did I say we resonate? She'll be coming here on the 20th of the month. She's coming home. This is going to be our, our home. And um, she's retired, as I am, of course. And uh, we're in the same business. We got multiple streams of income coming in. So we're really happy about that. And uh, the only thing that she doesn't have, she doesn't have any children. Much. I'm an empty nester. <laughs> so we're both empty nesters at this point. So we both can basically, how do you, how do I, how do I put it diplomatically? We both can do what the hell we want to do. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you know, but you know, I, I realized that adults my age and younger 
can learn from the likes of you and what you what you are currently experiencing now, and only because of the fact of the way that you think. Because the average, because you're 23 right now, right? Mm-hmm. Only because the average 23 year old would not be able to communicate with somebody in their 60s and have the wisdom and forethought and composure that you have. That's why you're on here. Because I don't bring everybody on here to, to, be, to be running up at the mouth. I'll shut well, you down. I, I, I haven't day. seen too many 23-year-olds uh, <laughs> on, on the I, Zoom. I will shut you down like I will shut you down like public enemy. If you ain't right, you ain't right. And uh, I haven't had to do that with you or your sister, as a matter of fact. And so um, I'm proud of you for what you've done. I wanted to have an opportunity to speak to you. And I wanted to look at it from the point of view is if, if you were sitting in front of somebody, what would they want to ask you? So I attempted to ask you questions and gain insight from you from your, from your life, your living, your experiences, your mindset. And if I left anything out, they'll let me know. But uh, I wanted to make sure that I had spoken to you because it's been a long time that I actually had, had an opportunity to record you and, and what you say. I think um, one time I did ask you, I did ask you to close out our connection with a word of prayer. Now, one of the things I learned is, is I don't need to promote prayer. I mean, I don't need to promote religion or politics, but this is my freaking Zoom. I can do what the hell I want to do. So <laughs> I agree. I agree. I can do what the heck I want to do. I stayed away from all the sensitive topics that the Lord knows there's enough of that because CNN, MSNBC, and, and Fox, they ain't paying me to talk about those things. So no, until not. they pay me, I, ain't, I don't need to talk about those things. I can't control those things anyway. Be honest. Right. I can get mad about some things, but that and a cup of that and a quarter might, might won't even buy me a cup of coffee. So I'm going to ask you in closing, because we've been on here for a while. I know you got things to do, busier than a one-legged man to butt kicking contest. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to close out, close us out with a word of prayer. I respect you that much to allow you to do that. So would you please, son, close us out with a word of bountiful prayer? I would love to. Father God, I thank you for this talk that we've had today. Father, I ask you that, Father God, you help people to gain some insight from things that were said, as well as to be able to change their lives based upon the conversation that me and my dad have had here tonight. I ask you, Father God, that you keep everybody safe from everything that's going on, as well as, Father God, I ask you that you give peace to people that are dealing with COVID-19 or dealing with family members that are affected by the virus. I ask you, Father God, that you be with everybody that is around. We also ask you that you keep everybody safe as well as to help everybody to learn from their mistakes and to become better people. This is my prayer in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, son, thank you. I'm going to let you go, man. I appreciate it. This, um, this recording, this uh, Zoom that I have is going to be saved in my cloud. You know, the cloud. It's going to be saved in my cloud, and I'll be able to download it, and I will send it to you via email. Okay. You'll be able to watch it at your leisure. Share it with those that might be impact, otherwise impacted. Is I'm going to share it in my messenger, in my group that I have. It's called the James MDC Group, Power Zoom Group or whatever. I'm going to, sit, I'm going to share it there. And I'm going to share it to anybody that needs to see it because adults and young people need to see what we talked about today. There are very many, there are very many parents, fathers, mothers, whoever, that don't have conversations with their young ones. They don't even talk to them. They talk at them. They don't talk to them to them at all. They don't know what's going on in their life. They have to believe or suppose that we don't even have a connection with their children. They even have a conversation with their children. They don't even know what, the, what, what, what a conversation is with children. There are people that I meet to this day that if I ask them to go ahead and talk to that person over there, do I, do I have to? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what to say, but I, you know, can, can you family occupation recreation money? Family occupation recreation money. Form. 
Talk to them about, their, 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 do they have a family? Do they have children? Do they have a job? What do they do when they're not working? What do they do for fun when they're not working? That's their recreation. Do they need money? Do they need income? Uh, what's going on in their life right now? Where do they live? How long do they live there? I mean, you can have a myriad of conversations with people if you're interested in what's going on in their life. I said, don't make it about you. It's not about you. It's like you prayed, right? When you prayed, you didn't. it wasn't about you. You no. were more concerned with other people outside of yourself, which made your prayer more meaningful. All right. That's about all I can say, son. I appreciate you, man. And thank you so right. much for your time. Give my best to everybody. And I'll see you when I see you. All right. You have a it's good hot. one. It's hot here in Nevada, boy. It's going to be like 108 degrees this week. Wow. That, that, that's, that's down 8 degrees than where, than, where, than where it was last week. It was 116 degrees one day last week. Wow. That's 116 degrees. But it's dry heat. It's, it's dry heat, though. It's dry heat. It's not, it's not humid heat. Well, that's good, at least. It was humid, boy. Call me, a, call me an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> call me one, too. <laughs> but it's good to see you, son. Good luck to you. I wish you well. I love you. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you again real soon. All right. Same to you. <laughs>